Welcome back to Stand, where the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. I'm your host, Kelly Chewbacca, a former U.S. Senate candidate in Alaska and currently the Alaska State Chair for President Donald Trump's campaign. And I'm joined today by my amazing son and co-host, Josiah Chewbacca, who is about to head off to college. Wah. <laughs> well, we're so excited to have you with us. Please make sure to check out our website, standshow.org. That's where you can become one of our amazing standouts, catch all of our past stand episodes, and join us on our stand team. We'd love to have you, standshow.org. You can find us on YouTube and our social media pages as well. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. We've got a fantastic and delicious show for you today. We're going to be talking with Molly Blakely. She's the CEO and founder of Molly Bees Cookies. You can find her website, mollybees.com, M-O-L-L-Y-B-Z.com. I'm going to give you the formal introduction, but I want to tell you why I care. I met Molly and started talking with her before her business was famous and got a subscription <laughs> to her box of cookies and fell in love. Um, also put on a lot of weight. It was how we got through COVID. We <laughs> called them our COVID cookies because they came in the mail faithfully and they got us through a really hard time. And they are so amazing. So we're going to tell you the entire story today of how Molly B's cookies became famous. Molly started her business with $150. And now this business has grown from being a little mom kitchen shop, which you're going to see the inside of her kitchen today. And $150 to these cookies now being featured at the Emmys and the Grammys uh, she's talking about, or maybe now has the cookies in Walmart across the nation. And I can personally tell you that these are addictive and unique and featured all over social media. So we are so excited to introduce you to Alaska's own and favorite Molly Bees. <laughs> We're so excited to have you with us, Molly. Thank wow. you for joining us today. What an intro. Thank you so much. Yeah, I remember there was like the first eight months that I was doing sending you your cookies. I was actually driving 45 minutes to deliver them to your door. The you first personally eight months was, delivered them I to was, our door. I was personally delivering them to your door for like the first eight months. <laughs> yes. And we got to exchange hugs. And it's the, the yes. life of an entrepreneur when you're starting out maintaining those client contacts, right? I know it. I know it. <laughs> Yeah, so we want to start sure. out talking to you about I'll... that. Yeah, yeah, I I'm excited remember, too. I remember you bringing the cookies to our doorstep and meeting you a couple times, and I always wondered what led you to start Molly B's Cookies. You know, uh, it's a really good question, and it actually is like kind of like my anthem now. Like I was owned a really well-known business in a little tiny town in Alaska, and the people that bought it fraud me and didn't pay me. It was like an over million dollar deal. And um, I got down to my last $150 and I had a mortgage and a car payment and I was a single mom and I didn't know what I was going to do. So I started making super weird gourmet cookies and I was doing like 20 boxes a week. And then it went to like 45 boxes a day and I had to move production into like a kitchen in a church from me and mixing up my house with my son who was 10 at the time. And then I started getting help. And then we hired one bakery and then two bakeries. I moved to the big city of Anchorage area, you know, and started working with bakeries there. And then I ended up having to find out about a cookie factory. I didn't know what I was looking for. I'm thinking in my head, I need a Willy Wonka style thing, but I don't know. But it was like, as far, we just kept growing so fast, I couldn't keep up. And so we finally got a co-packer and now I work with eight co-packers and I have a warehouse in Dallas and uh, my co-packers on the East coast and the West coast and the mid coast. And I mean, it's all a God thing. It's just unbelievable how quickly it's happened. That's truly remarkable. I know it's very hard for businesses to get started. So, I mean, that's honestly, it's an American dream story right there. You have $150, you start off just making something in your kitchen. And then before you know it, you're nationwide. So I'm young and I'm looking to go into business myself. What advice okay. would you have for young entrepreneurs based on your experiences? Well, to start out, you want to have proof of concept. You want to make sure that you have something that people are going to want. So um, start with your friends and family and then kind of stock them. You know, if you have friends and you have to give out a lot of product, 
a lot of product and get feedback and listen to the feedback. Don't take it personally. These are people that will be your customers in the future. So definitely listen to what the feedback is. And if it's consistent, then you need to look into that. If it's just a one try or one person here or whatever, there are people that get jealous when you start a business and they don't want you to do well. There's you have to so you really have to vet it out. And just number one, stay close to the Lord. He will guide you in every single step that you want to take. And the most important thing besides the Lord is to make sure to never give up. The ones that don't make it are because they gave up. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about that. We'll have to follow up with that when we have our discussion later. So Molly, talking about this proof of concept, um, your cookies are unique is a as a special way of putting it. You don't have normal cookies. So, I mean, we can get cookies People can get, go get regular chocolate chip cookies at the store. Yes. Boring chocolate chip cookies. We don't actually buy them. Right. We, (laughs) we make cookies at home and we have cookie contests at home. Right. And those, but those are not the cookies you make. So what is different? There's a reason why your cookies have taken off from, you know, hand delivering them to Kelly Chewbacca's house to more and more people (laughs) buying boxes to now. Yeah them becoming a a store brand name. What's different about your cookies for people who don't know? Well, I mean, okay. So our number one seller is called the straight fire and it's our rendition of s'mores. So we have like a big roasted marshmallow on top of it. And there's like, you know, graham cracker crumbs and chocolate chips. But then instead of using vanilla extract, I actually am using a cinnamon, like a hot cinnamon extract. So when you take a bite, you're getting this crazy palette of all, all these things. So people love the big marshmallow on top. That's always a, a good seller. Um, But we also have some that have double smoked bacon. I have a rib- coffee grounds in some cookies um we have one that has um white chocolate with uh sun-dried mangoes and then we roll it in hot cheeto dust um there's just co- and they have fun names like the hot mess or straight fire or big joe or the boss man they're like really fun names and uh i just most recently launched a, a bag of mini cookies that are it's like a if a snickerdoodle and a shortbread had a baby and then we added boba to it. It would come the boba doodles. And so we, I have a bag of boba doodles now and we have them in eight different flavors. We're launching four right now in two major stores. And I actually am flying to Seattle for a meeting with another major store on Tuesday. That's amazing. I remember my favorite cookies. I really could not stop eating them were the Earl Grey ones. What were those called? London yes, Fox. the tea. Those are someone just two days ago, I was on a podcast for another guy and he got his box of cookies. He said, it was, this is the best cookie I've ever had. Period. Ever had. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and you can't stop eating them. They go with everything. They're the perfect dessert yes. cookie. They're the perfect mid afternoon cookie. They're the perfect breakfast pastry. They go with everything. Do you remember which was your favorite cookie? It had like this lemon glaze on top. Oh yeah. I remember that. That's the tea. Yeah. That's the tea. The best cookie. cookie. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really good, unique cookie. So for people who are listening right now and thinking, I want a cookie, mollybees.com, M-O-L-L-Y-B-Z.com. Z. B Z. I didn't want to be Molly BS. (laughs) Sorry, Molly (laughs) BZ. Well, so speaking of BS, you people who are business owners, people who are entrepreneurs encounter a lot of BS face a lot of trials, maybe hit Mm -hmm. bumps or even hit failures and setbacks. You talked about one in your, in your previous entrepreneur experience with just hitting a fraudster. What, what are some of the trials you've hit in Molly BZ? Maybe we talk about one and pick it up after the break. Uh, Can you just sort of inspire us with, Hey, it's not like it's all uh, cookies and time with my son over here. This is what actually (laughs) happened in this journey, There's that would be great. Lot. Yeah. It, well, a lot of people don't realize like just to get from start to finish to like when, with the Walmart deal from the first conversation until we're actually in store is about 15 to 18 months. And mm-hmm. so it takes a really long time to do that. And there's a lot of stuff in between that has to happen. And they might be like, mm, we don't like that and drop you and be like, never mind. And so, and that has happened to me, you know, and we're like, whoa, what just happened? We, I thought we were best friends, you know? And so you have to be on the game, make sure that your team and you have to work in excellence. You have to make sure that everything is the same. Like yesterday, all we did was a meeting about UPC numbers and three of us read them off the same ones to each other because did you know that stores can fine you up to a hundred thousand dollars if you have the wrong UPC number, which is the barcode on the back of your wow. thing? If they get a, your product and it doesn't scan correctly, they will fine you. 
So there's just things like that, that you have to constantly be, but the, I, I'd say the biggest struggle in my business, because we are growing so fast right now, I'm doing seven launches and we've got a eighth one coming and it's just uh, getting enough investment to, to grow as fast as we're growing. Because every oh, yeah. single launch is a several, like $50,000 a launch around there. Yeah. That makes sense. Just finding people who believe enough in the vision and the product to continue yep. to invest in the next stage and the next launch. Yeah. So absolutely. I'm, I'm curious. And maybe if you even have a soundbite on this, where do you get, where do you draw on for your perseverance? It sounds like a lot of this is just, like you said, not giving up. Where do you draw on your perseverance from? A hundred percent Jesus, a hundred percent Jesus. And like I, my, I love my church. I go to King's Chapel, Eagle River, and it's a spirit filled church and they will pray for me and pray with me, or they will, the, they will know and just call me and say like, we feel like you need prayer today. And it's always on time, you know? And so that's where it is. And, you know, listening for that still small voice. And sometimes like I got invited to a thing from a major, major TV network work. And I prayed about it and God said no, and I didn't go, but it was a big decision. You know, I wanted to go, my flesh wanted to go, but I knew that I, they were, I found out later aligned with something that I don't believe in. So, you know, it was such a protection for my brand, you know, so definitely when things get hard, just hit your knees and pray. God will always show up and it won't make sense sometimes right away, but it always does in the long run. That's always. good. So there are people listening right now who need a little dose of that perseverance. We're going to close out this segment. I want to close it out with a prayer for you. I pray that the Lord oh. gives you the perseverance that you need and the Amen. wisdom that you need just guiding you, gives you the strength by his spirit for these next decisions. That little voice behind you to tell you that this is the way, walk in it, and the courage to continue to take a stand. You're on stand with Kelly and Josiah Chewbacca today. We're talking to Molly Blakely with mollybeescookies.com. We'll pick up on the other side of the break. Hit us up at standshow.org during the break. Hit subscribe. We'll see you in just a minute. Welcome back to Stand. Today you're with Kelly and Josiah Chewbacca, my son, and we are with Molly Blakely with Molly B's Cookies founder and CEO of Delicious Gourmet Cookies. We're so glad to pick up this talk with you. So Molly, we talk a lot on stand about taking a stand for faith, for freedom, government by the people. I think freedom really stands a lot in our business world for freedom of our economy and free market system. But we don't just see people taking a stand in the political world, which is often what people talk about, especially with some of the guests that we have people have to take a stand in all areas of their life. And so I wanted to talk with you about having to take a stand in the face of adversity in this mm -hmm. world that you're in. Uh, you just kind of referred to it, you know, having to take a stand about not taking an opportunity with an organization that didn't align with you. But could you share with us some of the decisions that you've made, some experiences that you've had having to take a stand in the face of adversity as a business owner? You know, everyone knows that like, everything has gotten more expensive. So when I started, butter was $1.99 and now it's $3.49 to $3.99. And so I had to make a decision. Am I going to switch to margarine and, and possibly change the complete integrity of what I've been building this entire time and save the money or not? And I decided not to. And I didn't raise my prices because I wanted people to be able to still enjoy it. So my margins dropped a little bit, but not a humongous amount. And I really think that that is what has helped me to stand and stay you know, still like competitive with the other people out there. I mean, I'm being compared to with like pricing is like Nabisco and, you know, that sort of thing. So it's, I wasn't prepared for that or a premium gourmet cookie. So, but um, that alone is good. And then also having a stand in my integrity of who I am, you know, there are things that I don't want to align in that, that I'm invited to that are big opportunities that I just say, oh, no, thank you. You know, and also I'm really bold about my faith. You know, I went to the world food, um, competition a couple of uh, months ago and they invited me there and I brought someone to the Lord right there in the middle of the stadium, you know, and I, and I believe in a, a divine appointments and I know that that's part of my purpose here on this world and I won't compromise that. So that's, that's really one of the things that I do take a stand on. If people ask me about it, I'm bold. I love that about you. You're, you're bold about a lot of things like, you know, Cheeto <laughs> sauce on cookies, bold. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
I think that I think going into business takes a lot of boldness. Absolutely. Yeah. It's uh that's one of the things that's gonna make you good at business too. That's what I think. So one of the questions I had and having gone with you through this journey, you know, having been in conversations with you when you were first getting your legs up under you, kind of those hard stages of the entrepreneurial journey. Yes. It really is, I believe, and Josiah and I have talked about this because he's interested in going into business. It's the business owners, whether they're small business owners or small business owners that become large business owners, our, our companies and our corporations that really drive the economic industry of America. But in mm -hmm. order to have small businesses and large businesses, you have to have people willing to take the risk and get out there and do that. People who are not comfortable just being employees and saying, I'm going to go exchange time for a paycheck and work for someone else. But instead they say, I've got an idea. Like you said, I'm going to hustle for capital. I'm going to take a risk and put it out there and then have some exposure and um, try and create product and add value to the market and the economy and exchange that for something. So you're someone who's out there doing this every day and engaging with other entrepreneurs. So I wanted to ask you, what's your take on why more people aren't engaging in the American dream in this way? Why don't they just go for it? Well, I think that they don't have the faith, first of all, because God's going to give you ideas and inventions if you listen to them. Um, but there are a lot, it's fear-based. So a lot of people are like, how do you do this? How do you know you won't fail? I don't know I won't fail. I've failed lots of cookies that I tried to give to people. And they're like, oh, this is horrible. I'm like, it is bad, isn't it? You know, and so, you know, you just have to, you have to be okay with the bounce back and you have to be really prepared to pivot. But they, you know, if, if something that a concept that you've come up with that you absolutely love that you feel like it's a divine thing and there's nothing else out there like it, go for it. What there's no one stopping you except for you. Stop limiting yourself to maybe they won't like it, maybe they will, or whatever. You don't need to sell to the whole world. There are people that just want indulgent cookies. The people that are gluten free are not my customers. You know what I mean? I'm just going for the ones like me that want something really delicious and naughty. And there's enough of people, 8 billion people in the world. There are going to people that love what you're coming up with. So you have to just cling on to that and know. And I always talk about the peach thing. And remember this, because it's really important. You could be the juiciest peach, the most sweet peach, the most beautiful peach in the world. And there are still people that just don't like peaches. So don't take it personally if they don't like your stuff. Just be like, they don't like peaches and move on. And just know that. Don't get defensive. Be open and always be kind. Mm -hmm. Those are some wonderful, wonderful observations. I've heard the peach one before. And it's true. Some people just, they just don't like just peaches. Don't like and peaches. It's unfortunate, but for the people that do like peaches and the people that do like Molly B's cookies, yeah. how do you want your business to impact and change their lives? Their lives. Well, I wanted to bring them joy. I want them to have an experience that just makes them happy. I have scripture on all of my packaging. So, and I just put the little address so they have to look it up because I want people to have to be tangible and see what is this? Why is this this here? You know, and I'm, I love that. But also I have a bunch of silly dad jokes on the back of all my boba doodles. And it says to do a silly fun dance in order to eat them. And you have a better experience. I just want people to have joy. I want them to get them. I want them to learn my story and be inspired to, you know, Mary Kay started her business at 45. Uh, KFC started at 59. I was 45 when I had to start completely over. It's doable. You're never, ever, ever too old. You're not just start right now. See, so that's I'm not too old. You're not. I, no, I don't you know are where not. that's coming from. I, I just want to bring out some family laundry right now. I haven't even started yet. I'm not even at my prime entrepreneurial starting age yet. I'm very confused. I don't know where all of this is coming I just, from. That's <laughs> Molly. I, <laughs> so, You're never too old. Absolutely. Uh, just so glad that you shared that with my high school son, Molly. That was just a lot of wisdom coming from a moment of experience. Look at him. He's like, he needed, I didn't come he needed to hear that mom hasn't even reached her I prime. <laughs> You're not I, even I, close to entrepreneurial I, age yet. I agree. You haven't reached your prime entrepreneurial age. I'm not sure why we're acting as if I've said anything said, about my I've age. Never... You're talking trash <laughs> about my age I'm, ever. I literally have no idea where this is coming from. My life is over. <laughs> She's ended me. Mrs. Molly, what are your dreams for the future? Because I have none. <laughs> so my dreams for the future are, I want to exit in two years, 2027. Um, 
consistent with other people who have exited at the same pace that I'm growing right now. Um, there was a candy company that just recently exited at 360 million. Um, there was another one pretzel company that um, exited at 1.1 billion. Um, so that's my plan. I want to exit. Um, all my investors will be very happy. And then I plan on um, making, and I started a nonprofit called the Blakely Foundation that is helping kids out of foster care that are just lost. Because some of them, when they get out of foster care, people will just beat them on the streets. So like, there you go. Best of luck to you. And it's um, teaching them how to do every single possible part of the restaurant business. So it's called Entry Level mm -hmm. Academy. It's already been approved by the state of Alaska as a second post educa educational program. And um, we're starting it. So I want to grow that. I want it to be national. And I want to help kids that just need a little help and motivation and know that they're loved and that they can do anything. So that that's where my heart is. That and helping women that are like a single moms like I was all kind of in together with it. Hmm. That's wonderful. We have only a couple minutes left in the segment. So I've got just one last question for you. Okay. What would be your message to all of America? If you could say one thing to our entire nation, that's good. What would you say? Remember that we were founded on in God we trust. And don't forget that. That's it. That's wonderful. That's Short, good. simple, to the point. And yeah. Extremely, extremely important for our country, yeah. our nation, our future, our success. You are on stand with Kelly and Josiah Jabaka. This has been an amazing interview with Molly B from Molly B's Cookies. Stay Thank tuned. You. We are going to come back right after the break. We're going to talk about some of that dirty laundry you just aired because I don't know where <laughs> that came from. So we're, uh, we're going to have some family dynamics talking after the break. So come on back and join us. Also, make sure that you get a snack. Go to mollybeescookies.com. That's M-O-L-L-Y-B-Z.com. Get your cookies. Come back after the break. Stand firm. Stand by. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to Stand. You're with Kelly and Josiah Chewbacca today. We just had a great discussion with Molly Blakely of Molly Bees Cookies. You can find her at mollybees.com. I was B -Z. really... B-Z. B-Z. Thank you, Josiah. <laughs> I was really inspired by how Molly was talking about perseverance and not giving up. And it reminded me of a conversation that you and I were having in earlier this week about how important it is as a family value of ours to never give up. Mm. Do you remember that conversation? That one I do remember, yes. <laughs> well, then I'm glad that more than one of us is not having memory issues anymore. <laughs> so I remember the conversation kind of centered around one of your friends sort of <laughs> wanting wanting to kind of feel out how what the process was to become a member of our family. Like, how do you get adopted into the Chewbacca family? And you were running through family values. So tell us that story. Yeah. So I was talking with one of my friends. He's 17, but he's younger than me. So I'm going to turn 18 before he does. We'll just give him a shout out. His name's Josh Pack. He's a great guy. Um, so I was joking around about how I was going to adopt him and his younger brother, David. David's like 13. And they're just, we're friends. We're all, we're all in the friend group. They're great guys. And I was like, I'm going to turn 18. I'm going to adopt you guys. And you're gonna be Chewbacca's. And I said, but you know, being being a Chewbacca is more than a name. And I told them, you know, when you're Chewbacca, you're you become two things. You gotta have two core integral values. I told them number one is Chewbacca's never give up. Number two is Chewbacca's never lose. And so I explained to them, Chewbacca's never give up. That's pretty simple and easy. I remember when I was like three. And I told you like I wanted to give up or I was gonna quit something like, and it was something super stupid. It was like I was, was like playing like Lego Batman on the Wii, and like couldn't figure out one of the levels, and so I was like, I quit. As in like I'm gonna go do something else now. I'm gonna come back and try and figure this level out later. And you were like, 
know Chewbacca's never quit. The only mom ever who says you have to play video games. Yeah, right. You're like, no, Chewbacca's never give up. And I don't, for some, for me, for some reason, that just really stuck with me. And I just remember you really hammered that into Denali and I just growing up throughout like our whole childhood. Like Chewbacca's never give up. Chewbacca's never give up. Chewbacca's never quit. Quit's not in your vocabulary. You don't get to quit. Keep going at it. Keep it. So like, there's this. Uh, you, I don't know if you know this meme, but there's this meme. It's, You're uh, talking to me like I don't know what a meme is. <laughs> no, is I, that I, like I a know, mom? I, no, I don't know if you know this meme. Oh, so thank you. It's a. Uh, it's uh, this guy goes never back down. Never what? You ever heard that? No. You see, yeah, see, she didn't know that meme. So yeah. So the guy goes never back down. Never what? And the team goes never give up. <laughs> 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 and so it's like you know the team like doesn't want to do it. But then the one guy's just like super intense, never back down, never why? <laughs> and I'm like, and that's a hundred percent me. Cause like for me, like it's not a joke. Like for me, like I go to my friends and I'm like, y'all never back down, never what? And they're like, that's not even funny, bro. And I'm like, no, say it. Like never give up. So I told them, listen, you can't give up. Chewbacca's don't give up. Chewbacca's don't quit. It's that value of perseverance and resilience. And I would say it's the thing that's made me most successful thus far easily is just learning how to not give up because you know like they don't give they don't give phds to the smartest students they well, give them to point. the most stubborn it's like can, like, can you person, sit in yeah, your perseverance seat? and stubbornness exactly. are actually the same value just it's, it's the same sides of two yeah. sides of the same coin yeah that's right yeah and then chewbacca's never lose i told them like look your mindset's got to be you know we don't we don't always win so i don't want people to hear me wrong chewbacca's don't always win but we never lose mm -hmm. because winning isn't always up to you. It's not always your choice to win, but you are the only person who can choose to lose. That's a losing mindset. Losing is a choice. That's a good point. Losing is, I, losing is quite frankly, I gave up. I, I didn't stick with it. I didn't put my best in. I lost. There's something wrong with me. This one's on me. Winning is... Listen, the other person was just better. I just got to improve or, hey, like. I ran out of time. Things, I ran out of time. <laughs> things didn't shake out the way I thought they would. That's totally fine. But you don't ever lose. And it's just like, I remember like playing soccer growing up as a kid. And I remember like the most embarrassing thing was because we lost almost every single soccer game, regardless of which team I was on. Right. And almost every single game, you know, soccer coaches can be so mean sometimes. It's funny. But they would come up to be, <laughs> they would come up to us, they'd be like, Y'all, that team was hot trash. They did not win. Y'all y'all right. lost. Y'all lost that game. That that team didn't win. You guys lost. And so it's this difference between not not losing, you know. It's not the same thing as always winning. You can't always win, but you can never lose. You can choose to not lose. Exactly. I like your sports metaphor because that's where I learned it. So I grew up playing competitive softball and at one point was on our team that led Alaska to nationals for softball. I think I was 11. And your grandma would often give me feedback. And she was a tough coach. Like you said, soccer coaches aren't always nice. Grandma wasn't always nice, but she was a good coach. Yeah. And she would give me feedback just along those lines that that team didn't win, you lost. Right. Which isn't a reflection on how the score came out. It's a reflection on how you played the game. Exactly. So you can come up short on score, but play a winning game. Like you, you left it all on the field. You yeah. played your heart out. You played your best, but they outplayed you, which mm -hmm. means that you just played up. So mm -hmm. she would intentionally put me on the field with players that were a lot better than me so that I would have to play up. And right. so I often, you know, got outscored, got outpitched, somebody would outbat me but I would my skills would get better and better so that when I then played with the girls my age I was much better than them because mm -hmm. I was always in situation if you will where I was being outplayed right. but I wasn't losing because I would just remember what she was coaching me she's like I'm intentionally putting you in way above your level mm -hmm. don't let the score or how how the count is coming out get into your head it's a mindset right and instead, remember that you're here to play up. Like you're here to increase your level. Then yeah. when you get into your own league level, you're going to be much better because you've been 
hitting balls that are being pitched faster. Mm -hmm. People are throwing faster. People are running faster. So you have to play at that level. It's a mindset shift. Right. Yeah. You only lose when you give up. And I would say if I were to put a definition on it for our audience, I would say losing is the act of willingly and intentionally seeding victory. It's allowing the other person to win, giving it over in order to not lose, it's just that that stick with it. You know, Take I'm a stand. not going to give up. I'm going to keep playing. It, I mean, I mean, it's happened to me before. I mean, we were doing, we were doing a event in this building that we're in with the studio right now, where I was on a team, and we had to do this like super intense, like two hour long scavenger hunt relay race thing. And about halfway through, it looked like our team wasn't going to make it. it. Looked like we weren't going to win. We had messed up. And all the other guys on my team wanted to quit and give up. And I said, no. Never give up. I said, never back down, never what? And, and, and guess who ended up winning that? Another team. No, our, <laughs> our, our team ended up winning. I'm messing with you. We of ended up winning because we didn't, we didn't concede the victory. So it's a lot of people I think will try to really shame you for being persevering. A lot of people will tell you, mm. you know, it's over, give up, what are you doing? You're foolish, you can't win, you're being stupid. Like, and they will really come after you. And I would say, that's just part of, that's just part of that mental game. Part of that mental game is, you know, <laughs> even if they're right, you know, right. Even, if, even if they're right, I, I don't care because I know if I give up, if I concede defeat, if I let the other people win, then I definitely lose. But as long as I hang in there, there's there's even the slightest chance that I might win, then I'll take that. I had a mentor tell me something similar early in my career, which I thought was really valuable and helped shape this mentality. He had said, part of the victory in finishing well, so finishing your career well, finishing your performance well, any job, anything, is just choosing to not quit. If you look around at any career field, whether it doesn't matter what it, what it is, you see this major dip off in people in the middle um, mm. age sector of their career. And he said, it's because people just choose to opt out. They yeah. choose to quit. And so we see a falling off of subject matter experts and industry leaders, mentors, people who can lead and pave the way because people quit and they opt mm. out. And he said, the only person who can make that choice fundamentally is you. Yeah. And the the people who, if you if you go and you ask, really successful people, the champions, the people who make the biggest difference, have the biggest influence, they'll say exactly what Molly said, exactly what you're saying. I just chose to not quit. Mm. It's just a daily choice to not give in to discouragement, to despair, to the cacophony of mediocrity around you saying come mm-hmm. be like us keep your head down and it's said to continue to persevere and, and blaze forward yeah. now i'll tell you uh, it also comes with a, a weakness which is you never quit <laughs> yeah that sucks <laughs> That's yeah a, yeah and so we can pick up that discussion on the other side of the break but this is uh, i think a huge part of what it means to stand and we wanted mm-hmm. to encourage our audience with that today you're listening to stand You're on the show today with Kelly and Josiah Chewbacca, who's heading off to college. And hit us up at standshow.org while you're on the break. Make sure to hit subscribe. Become one of our standouts. We'd love to have you join us. And we'll see you on the other side of this break. Welcome back to Stand. You're with Kelly Chewbacca and Josiah Chewbacca today. We were talking about the courage it takes to take a stand with perseverance and to never give up. And so we were just mentioning that sometimes we found that taking a stand and not giving up has its downsides. Mm -hmm. That one of the good things is you don't give up, you persevere. You're the only one who can take yourself out. I love the Minio song about that. Um, What is it? What? You can't stop me. I don't know what you're on. Yeah, you can't stop me. I love that song. That the only person who can stop me is me. 
is what he says in that yeah. song, which I like. Yeah, my, my biggest enemy is me. Right. Yeah. And, and the even only, I can't stop me. Yeah. So the only person who can get him to quit is him. Yeah. And it's he basically talks about this principle that we're we're talking about. I love that. And for the people who are in this mentality, this perseverance mentality, one of the hard things, I think one of the weak things, the weaknesses that comes with this mentality is you don't quit. And there are maybe times when it is good to quit. Like I have found sometimes, so you'll hear, hear me out. Sometimes uh, it was probably better to end that unhealthy relationship a little sooner instead of holding on to it until it really needed to be ended. So just to put out there that there are times that that I have found that my never give up, never quit mentality has had some limits and I've I've learned to draw better boundaries through time. Okay. Are you hearing me? I'm hearing you. <laughs> okay. So I've learned that this strength also can be a weakness and have had to balance it with healthy boundaries. Okay. So drawing, uh, it's still, I think, one of our strongest values and what has given us a above average or extraordinary level of courage and ability to accomplish goals and victories. And it also needs to be balanced with healthy boundaries around decision making or family or like, for example, never give up on starting my business could turn me into a workaholic that sacrifices family time. So it's the balance of never give up plus healthy boundaries that right. leads to success. Does that make sense? It does. And I would say, obviously, common sense with what you <laughs> never give up on. I would say for sure. me, it really comes from the mentality of, you know, am I giving up on this thing or is it already dead? You know, because you, sure, you, you, you can't give up on dead things. And so like something I would kind of relate it to is the stock market. So like day trading please don't apply your never give up mentality <laughs> to a point. stock that's just plummeting. Bad and you're money just, after bad money. <sighs> just keep on, like, no. Yeah, that no. doesn't work. With you're, you're not giving up. You're realigning, rethinking your goals and purposes and coming at things from a new angle and then accepting reality. Correct. That's a really good way of, of applying it. Yeah. 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 You were talking to me about Bon Jovi. I was talking to you about Bon Jovi. I was hoping that you would just let me go into that. So I, I, just, I think it's interesting that you're throwing back to somebody who is famous in my generation. He's, he's still famous. He is still famous. All the kids know him. All the kids? <laughs> All, he's a meme. Uh, oh, he's a, what's a So my eighth grade guitar teacher, his daughter, she was in, I think, like third grade at the time. She knew the words to Living on a Prayer when it came on. She knew what? She knew the scream part. You know the we're halfway there. Y'all know the song. Right? Yeah, so I could she, join you, but yeah, you could. Then that would become a meme. Then we would blow out their mics. So uh, <laughs> we respect your ears. So I was just thinking that song's super powerful because you know it's about Johnny and Gina. And, you know Johnny's got a six-string heart, and he and Gina are trying to make it, and they have each other, and that's a lot. And they choose to give it a shot. And then right as soon as they choose to give it a shot, they're halfway there. They're already halfway hey, to the Hey, profound goals, point. You know? And for me, that's that's like that's really actually super true. Half of the battle in getting anything done ever is just giving it a shot and not choosing not choosing to go for away. it. Just yeah. choosing to go for it, choosing to stand up, and then making that the firm decision so you're not going to sit down. And then the other fifty percent is just all the <laughs> all the other stuff well the hard work and i think yeah. i think molly actually said it really well a lot of faith yeah it's putting putting a lot of faith it. work behind it yeah exactly and so i think that just was super applicable and it reminded me of this uncle we have so we're a mixed family which means we're black which means we call people auntie and uncle who aren't actually blood yeah we and have a lot of love we have a lot of love and one of my uncles is dad's really close friend. And he's like one of the top eye surgeons in the country, right? You know, the guy that I'm talking about. And I just got to thinking, you know, I wonder what kind of grades he got in school to become the top eye doctor in his country. And I was thinking about like the med track in college. And you know, like if you're going to college, people tell you get good grades in high school. Mm -hmm. Once you go to college, D's get degrees. 
you know you get your degree you get a d that's fine take the d unless you're going into like med or law in which case you need a's in college but then once you get to med school or once you get to law school d's get degrees right so there's this idea that you know get a's for when it matters and then once you get into the thing you want to go into your Hmm. d's get your degrees and i was thinking you know i wonder if that was his mentality no because i don't think you get to be the top doctor in your field with that mentality you see i think that he got a's in high school and then got A's in college, and then got A's in med yeah, that's school. Right. And then once he got out of med school, and once he was doing his residencies, he got A's in his residencies. And so I think it's, if you really want to be successful, follow this guy's example. Don't don't fall for that D's get degrees. Like that is mediocre, standard level. That Those are the people who will also tell you, why haven't you given up yet? Just give up. Hmm. And it's not that mentality that will carry you through the fires and the storms that you're going to have to face if you stand for what you believe in. So he kind of really inspired me in that regard. And it also really reminded me of my hunting trip. So for me, I would say that was easily the number one way I learned perseverance because it was over the course of two summers. We'd gone hunting the one summer, didn't get anything. And then we gone on four other hunts and every single time it was just nothing 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 and these weren't easy hunts like we were walking miles and miles and miles it was all on foot in mountains pack hunting in right. mountains horrible horrible experience and on our, on our horrible last weather hunt, horrible <laughs> weather and on our last hunt we walked 50 miles in this area and we don't even see anything and that was before we got to the place where that, we were okay, even going to go get something. You're exaggerating something. a little. You saw I'm a lot not. of bugs. <laughs> we didn't. No, it was horrible. It was, it was so bad. It was so bad. And I wanted to quit because we were, we were coming down the second day and the trail was so horrible and we knew it was a 17 mile hike back out. And we were just like, we haven't seen a single thing. We're headed home. And I wanted to give up. And I was just like, I'm done hunting. Like, I'm never doing this. Like, who the heck does this? This is Why? Why? And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the lights in the city way off in the distance. I'm thinking about all those people sitting down on their sofas, drinking milkshakes. And I'm like, going to grocery I stores. I want to be that guy. <laughs> like, what the heck am I doing out here living in hell? And <laughs> thankfully, the guys that were with me kind of were like, no, don't give up. So then we hiked out the next day and I was just like, you know what? I'm not ready. To, I'm not ready to give up yet. So I said, let's go to an entirely different area where we already have experienced nothing but failure before. Mm. And we walked another 20 miles and we got an animal. That was my first animal. And that was so profound to me that you just don't give up. Even when no one, like no, (laughs) if we had come back after those three days, no one would have blamed us. Like we had walked 50 miles. It was one of the hottest summers on record up here. It was terrible. No one would have blamed us. The other guy who was with us tapped out, but we didn't give up. And then guess who came home with the guts and the glory? Right. That's absolutely right. Which could be a Bon Jovi song, Guts and Glory. But to your point, the bon Jovi. <laughs> not giving up leads to these really great experiences. But the other part that I take from your story about the doctor is it's also pursuing excellence. It's mm. doing it well. It's doing it with the right, right. attitude. It's not doing it with the pitiful, resentful, you know, mm. shoulder slumped attitude. Well, yeah. I guess I'm not giving up today because I I don't know that it. Because if you do it with that attitude, that's called losing. I think that that's yeah. right, and I also don't know that you would have, for example, gotten the the animal. You, I don't know that you would have been successful. But also. Um, there's such an important value in understanding that we are made for a purpose and not like mm-hmm. a one-time purpose. Like at some point in your later years of life, you'll finally understand what in the world you are put here for. I believe that we are made for a daily purpose, mm-hmm. that there aren't, you know, chance encounters that, you know, accidentally, but in fact that we are designed for an impact and influence on people's lives. Yeah to inspire, to impact. I really liked that question you asked Molly. What's your 
what do you want your business? How do you want it to impact and affect people? Because we have a choice in those daily influences and impacts, and we have a purpose for being here. And I, I believe that it has to do with our interactions and our influence with other people that we're here to help and to um, encourage, to lift, to strengthen, to comfort other people around us. So part of not giving up, part of even acquiring these stories a story that happens in your perseverance and when nobody's watching is for the purpose of encouraging and strengthening and mm-hmm. helping others to not give up so that you right. can share those stories and so that we can live out that purpose with other people. And I think that's part of why we do things excellently as well. We don't live out our purpose with a half heart right. and, ha- and and a half attitude and, you know, kind of slop it together. Purpose so isn't sloppy. Person. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. So this is Stand. You've been with Kelly and Josiah Chewbacca. We're so glad that you are with us today. Pray that you have the courage to stand strong, to persevere, to never give up, and to do all things with excellence and purpose. Catch us on our next episode next week. All of our episodes are at standshow.org. Make sure to hit subscribe and follow us on social media. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for being one of our standouts.